Hi there everyone, Jamie Wake here and I just wanted to talk to you just for a moment about the OK To Be Gay campaign. As you can see I've uh, got myself in a little bit of trouble and I've got a compound fracture and I'm not going to lie, it's very painful. But something else that's painful is knowing that despite all those advances in equality for gay people, there are still young people out there in the world that are unable to deal with their sexuality and feel that the only solution to end their confusion is suicide. Now, broken bones will eventually mend, but sadly, unless we can ensure that young people know that it is okay to be gay, their pain may not mend as quickly. With Reading's very own Gay Pride Festival almost upon us, I can guarantee that the same questions will be asked of the organisers and LGBT campaigners such as why we need a Pride Festival in the first place, and why there isn't a heterosexual Pride either. I've always been asked that in every BBC interview I've ever done, and it always surprises me that a journalist asks the gays this question, but always neglects to ask other organisations who fight for equality for other minority groups that very same question. Now, to answer this question, we need to remember that the gay rights movement is a relatively modern event. And it's the result of an incident that took place at the Stonewall Inn, New York, in 1969. Now, most young people don't know the history of the gay rights movement and some of the atrocities that have happened in all, well, some of our lifetimes. And the fight for equality began on June the 28th of that very year. Now, at about 1.20 in the morning, eight New York City policemen raided the Stonewall Inn. On arrival, the standard procedure was for the bar's patrons, that's customers to you and I, to line up and have their identity checked. Now, if any of the patrons were dressed as women, they were to be arrested. Now, on this night in question, the drag queens made a stand, and they refused to go with the police or show them their identity. The police lost control of the situation, and the crowd began to riot. And this happened night after night. Now, up until this point, gay people had hidden behind closed doors, and these riots brought the gay people into the streets, and then organisations were formed to fight for gay rights. And then luckily, by the 70s, gay pride marches started to take place throughout the world. Even today, we are still fighting. Most people in society believe we have full equality. We don't. Gay people cannot give blood. Gay people cannot get married. This is why, even with my fracture, I am determined to try and march on the Reading Pride Parade this year. Whilst I won't be able to wear one of my usual elaborate costumes, I hope to still attend and celebrate diversity within the Thames Valley. As usual, we're already seeing all of the main political parties in Reading expressing their support towards the fight against discrimination. It's such a shame that they only do this just before the Pride Festival every year in the hope to secure the gay electorate's vote. I mean, I'm gay all year round, so why should these parties only remember us as a members of the Reading community at this time of year? Reading Lib Dems, for example, though, do support my OK to be gay campaign, but as of yet I still wait a response of support from all other political parties. The fight against homophobia in Reading needs to be a cross-party effort and should not be used each August for political point scoring. I beg you, please visit my campaign website at www.oktobegay.co.uk and help me inform Reading's community that it is okay to be gay and for those teenagers who are finding it difficult to come out to themselves as well as others that it will get better here in Reading. Over the years society has programmed people to believe that being gay is abnormal it's not. A Pride Festival is not just a party in a park. It's a reminder that all is not equal and we mustn't forget the event's intentions, its values and its necessity for fighting equality here in Reading, the UK and of course worldwide. All I ask is that we don't forget why the event is taking place. There are still many countries where homosexuality is illegal and punishable by death. Let's not forget that. There are still teenagers committing suicide throughout the world because they believe there is something wrong with them. Let's not forget that. 
And there are still members of the UK government that believe that homosexuality is wrong. Let's not forget that. And there are still religions that teach their people that homosexuality is a sin. Let's not forget that. And while these views exist, there is a need for pride. So while we educate Reading, let's educate ourselves. I mean, a simple glance at the local newspaper's website shows some of the views and opinions held by commentators on there. They don't understand the need for a parade, a festival, or a large protest. They wonder where their heterosexual pride is and why all they see is a number of men, including myself, dressed roughly as women. We need to tell them and let them have the opportunity to question the answers that they receive. They can only learn if we teach them. In July, I wrote to Reading MPs, Rob Wilson and Alok Sharma, about the OK to be Gay campaign. On the date of producing this short film, only Alok Sharma has actually replied to me. In my email to them, I told them that I knew that fighting discrimination against LGBT people here in Reading has not been a priority politically, and that it was apparent when you investigate the amount of funding other groups and charities, organisations and events in Reading receive compared to grants the Reading Pride Charity and Festival actually receives, for example. I asked both of our MPs what they were doing or planned to do as our MPs to address homophobic bullying in our area. I also asked if local authorities in Reading have signed up to Stonewall's Education Champions Programme. I also asked if schools in Reading have used their copy of FIT. I mean, every secondary school in the country was sent a copy of Stonewall's feature film DVD. I reminded both our MPs that homophobic bullying blights the lives of all young people and threatens the life chances of young people in our constituency. I asked them to do what they can as our MPs to address it. I of course wait patiently for Rob Wilson's reply and for Alex Sharma to come back to me with the answers to the questions I have asked. So, have a great pride, regardless of who you are or what you wear. But I believe that blatant is better than latent, and that is why I will be disappointed not to be wearing my new rainbow-covered metallic dress to this year's festival. So regardless of what they say, it is okay to be gay.